guys, it's Melanie from MelanieKham.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, another video in the Learn to Sew series. We're gonna do napkins, fabric napkins, uh, with a mitered corner, that beautiful corner technique. Great for beginner sewers to know how to do and make something super useful while we're at it. If you've been liking this series, hit that thumbs up button and all the other videos in the series are gonna be linked for you down below, as well as the supply list and the written instructions and all that good stuff is there for you to make it easy to find. Let's jump right in. I'm gonna show you how to make fabric napkins. All right, let's get started with our napkins and those mitered corners. I'm gonna be using this like linen style fabric stripes. Um, this is a yard of fabric and I pre-washed this. So whenever you're making things like aprons, napkins, things are gonna be washed regularly. You wanna wash it ahead of time because then that will pre-shrink it for you. Um, I did zigzag the edge, washed it in a mesh bag on cold in the delicate cycle. And then I put it in the dryer, tumble dry low. It's ready, but it's very wrinkly as you can see. So we want to press it over at the ironing board and just get it nice and easy to work with so that we can cut it. You don't wanna cut fabric that's super wrinkled like this because you won't get an accurate cut. Fabric is pressed and I've got it folded up so that my selvage, so the selvage is the part of the fabric at the top and the bottom of the fabric and it usually kinda of has this little fringe where the fibers are sort of coming out like in its natural state. This is not the cut edge, right? So the cut edges are on the sides and this was one yard. Because of our washing, it shrunk up to about 34 and a half inches. The good thing is there wasn't a lot of distortion on this fabric when it got washed. So we can see over here at the side, line up your selvages and it's pretty close. So we don't need to trim off too much. And we're gonna try to get 17 inch cuts as much as possible. If we need to go down to 16 and a half, that might be just depending on how much shrinkage your specific fabric had. Really, we want a square. So if you have to make sl small adjustments because of how much shrinkage you had, or maybe you had a little bit of a generous cut, that's okay, we just need a square. So I'm using my smaller mat here because I feel like that's what most people probably have. So we have our selvage up here at the top, but I am gonna fold it up one more time so that we can get a nice fresh cut. I do not recommend stripe fabrics for beginners. This stripe fabric is really cute and I am drawn to it, but if you are gonna use a stripe fabric as a beginner, just be really cautious because those lines are real good about calling out your mistakes. And so having an all over print or a solid is sometimes a little bit better because it hides things a little bit more than stripes can. You're gonna take your six by 24 inch ruler and we're gonna line that up. We're gonna use one of these horizontal black lines to go all the way across because we want that nice solid 90 degree angle. So we're going to line that up up, get that over as close to the edge as we can while still getting all of those edges. I'm gonna take your rotary cutter, cut it. Make sure, yep, we got all those layers. All right, so we have that one cut side, but I'm actually gonna do my nice cut on the other side because I wanna maximize as much of this fabric as possible to get that the largest square I possibly can. So go ahead and cut this other side. We'll have plenty with our width. It's our the 36 inches that we cut for our one yard cut. That's gonna be the tricky part. Then I'll take the entire thing, kinda use my tape measure. I've got 30, just at 34. So I feel confident going ahead and cutting at 17. So we line up one side over here, take our ruler, line that up at the 17 inch line. And then we're gonna verify ourselves by making sure that one of these horizontal lines is going nice and straight across of this fabric. And then that the 17 inch line down here and the 17 inch line up there are both in line with our ruler so that we make sure it's a nice 90 degree angle cut. And because I cut it exactly in half, I'm gonna assume that my other side is just fine. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do now. I wanna maximize the amount of leftover fabric that I have because I wanna use it in a later project. So what I'm gonna do is cut off my selvage edges because we don't wanna sew with those. So now that I have this edge cut, I'm gonna bring this over here because this side is folded. So if I measure from our cut side, I'll have a larger piece because it's folded over here as a scrap piece to use in a later project. That way it's not two individual strips, it's one piece. So that's just a way to try to maximize your, your fabric to have larger pieces for later use. So here's my 17 line. Look at the line going horizontal. I'm gonna look at my lines on the mat and then I'm also gonna look at that stripe. 
So then see, I have a larger piece as leftover. We can use that for one of our later projects. So now I've got two 17 inch squares. I'm gonna set those aside for now and go ahead and do the same thing with our other piece of fabric to get two more 17 inch squares. And the next step is strangely one of the most important steps for these mitered corners, and that is actually ironing. So if you've noticed at all in my Learn to Sew series or just in sewing in general, to get that nice look, it's not all just sitting at the machine and getting a straight stitch. It's all the prep work, you know, making sure fabric is cut properly, making sure everything is pressed properly. And that is really the secret to getting really nice finished sewn projects. We need to have our seam gauge. I like, I really like to have the seam gauge because you can very easily adjust the sizing that you want to do. You can draw a line, you can make a basically like a seam gauge out of like a cardboard, but I just find that this is the easiest thing to keep track of and it has plenty of options. So the first thing that we're going to do is fold over our fabric all the way around all four corners to one inch. So what we'll do is we'll move our seam gauge to the one inch mark, and then that blue mark helps us know that it's gonna be one inch all the way around. Now linen fabric can be kind of squirrely sometimes, so cotton, like just straight 100% cotton woven, like quilting cotton fabric presses beautifully. The linen might give you a little bit tr of trouble. So if you are using like a linen blend and sometimes you really have to get that steam to get a nice crisp line that's totally normal so you're not doing it wrong so we'll fold it over making sure that the tip of the seam gauge is in that fold nice and straight and then it's folded over to this blue mark i kind of like to do a, a, a quick press just to kind of get it to lay down flat i've got my steam on now that i've got this one whole side done I am going to, I just kind of gave it a quick press. Now I'm gonna go back through and give it a nice solid press. This is going to be, if doing this properly is going to be very helpful with our next steps. And um, taking your time on this, you won't regret it because it will help make your life easier later on in the project. So you really wanna have nice creases nice crisp creases here with the, the ironing. Continue that same thing going all the way around. Also, I wanna mention this is a really fancy iron. <laughs> uh, you do not need a fancy iron to make this project. Okay, I did all four sides of my one inch pressing. So now I want you to open it up and assuming that you have a water soluble pen, if you're using a friction pen or something that erases with heat, you can skip this step. But this is just one of those things that's gonna make our lives a little bit easier down the road. So where the crease is in this corner, I want you to just put a little mark. So right where that crease is in the corner, going toward the outside edge, I just have like a, a tiny little mark there. After that, you wanna grab your seam gauge and now we're gonna go to quarter of an inch. And now we're gonna do a quarter of an inch fold. So you'll do the same thing going all the way around with a quarter of an inch. I wanna also mention that these proportions can be adjusted. This is going to be the finishing size of our hem, our mitered hem, but if you want a little bit chunkier hem, that's okay. You could, instead of ironing over at one inch, you can iron over at a half inch and then still keep your quarter inch fold over, or you can increase it to a half inch if you feel like a quarter of an inch is giving you a hard time. You definitely can play around with some of these proportions in order to give you kind of different sizes. This, because it was folded over one inch and then we tucked it under a quarter of an inch, this is a three quarter of an inch hem. So don't worry too much about all that, but I just want to say that if you are like, oh, I love this idea, but I want it even larger, or you want to make a larger napkin, so you want to want to have a larger hem, you can totally do that. We've got our creases. Grab your ruler. We're going to just tuck it here in this corner. And because we did a one inch fold initially, we need to make two inch marks. So whatever that initial fold over is, you want to double that. So I've got my two inch mark and I'm going to take my pen and make a mark at the two inch mark. And then over here at the two inch mark. So two inches down, mark, two inches down, mark. And then grab your ruler again. 
we're gonna make a diagonal line. And this is why I had you make that little mark on the corner. I'm gonna just make sure we're, we're on the right track. So I'm gonna connect those dots and that line should go right above that creased corner, okay? So if for some reason you're making your mark below that corner, something's wrong, all right? So that just is like a little indication that we did it right. Okay, so we connected our two dots. So do that on all four sides. That step is done, let's head to the sewing machine. Okay, we are here at the sewing machine and what I want you to do is take your corner and here's my marked line and my crease is this way. So this is my wrong side of the fabric and my fabric is not an obvious right or wrong side, but if yours is, this should be the wrong side, this is the right side. So we are going to take our right sides together and we are gonna line up the marks. So match up those marks on either side of the fabric. And you'll know you're right if your fabric goes into a point and the rest of your fabric extending down are lined up. Then what we'll do is just kind of flick that quarter of an inch crease. It's already creased, so it should flip over pretty easily. like this. So here's that crease, that quarter of an inch crease. You can see the like the little tail coming off of the corner. And this is how we're gonna sew it. So just hold this with your fingers, bring that under your machine, and my blue line is here. So I'm just gonna use this to mark it. So where that creased over, there's no line, but you can f just, it's not very far, you'll follow it down with a straight stitch, back stitch here, back stitch here, and make a straight line right along that blue line. All right, let me show you one more time at a little different angle. Fold it so that the right sides go together and we can see this blue line on this side and we can see the blue line kind of coming through on the other side here. So we're gonna match those up and we'll know we did it right. It's coming to a nice point here and also the rest of our fabric is lining up going this direction. Then we'll flick that quarter of an inch crease that we made down. The fabric was already creased, so it should do this no problem. But you should be able to see your line. Many presser feet have the center of it kind of cut out, and so we'll just line our blue line or our marked line in line with that so we know we're going straight down. Backstitch at the beginning and the end. Do the exact same thing on all four of those corners. Okay, I'm done with all four of my corners. They look like this, they look kind of funny. You're gonna take your fabric scissors and we're gonna trim those dog ears off. It's gonna go about a quarter of an inch away from that seam. And trim any threads. We don't want those in the way. Then what you'll do, flatten out the seam with your thumb or your finger. So what I like to do is I like to use my index finger and I have nails so this is a little easier for me but I like to flatten it out, get my finger right in place and then flip it. Use my fingernail to kind of point that corner out and then now you can see that mitered corner coming together. That way the, the seam allowance is distributed evenly. We don't have all that bulk on one side or the other. So do that on all four corners. Then we're gonna go give it one more little press. I wanna point out too, I'm using pink thread so that you guys can see it. <laughs> I'm using a contrasting thread on purpose, but I would ultimately recommend a thread that's gonna blend really well with your fabric choice. Okay, I'm gonna give it one more little quick press, you know, because this linen is, gets kind of squirrely. So when I've done this before with crisp kind of cotton fabrics, I haven't needed to do this step. So it's just going to depend on if you feel like you need it or not. You can also throw some pins in there if you want to make sure that it stays down once you iron it. Okay, I'm at the machine. I've got my standard sewing foot on here, but I want to show you this foot. So if your machine came with a foot that looks like this, so what this is, is it has this little edge guide. 
and these are called sometimes a blind hem foot or an edge foot. This basic Juki machine came with this foot. And so if you have one, don't go out and buy one, but if you have one, I'm gonna start my napkin using just the standard foot and show you exactly how to do that. But then I'm gonna switch to this foot and show you guys how this works because it is super awesome. The thing with this foot is make sure that you have space in the foot to move your needle position around because that is what is gonna be key for this. There are a few of these feet out there where it has a fixed position and it wants your needle to only go in one spot. So um, if that's how yours looks, don't use it, just use the standard foot. But if you can move your needle position around, then grab it and I'll show you how to use it. But first let's use a standard foot. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna stitch very close to this fold on that hem. So we're gonna just tack it down very, very close to our edge, kind of like the edge of the placemat that we did if you watched the last video. Now we can do that a couple of different ways. So I am going to use the left side of my presser foot going down that left fold and I'm gonna put my needle position all the way on the left side. And then you'll follow that fold with the left side of your presser foot and sew all the way down, just like we've been doing with our placemat. If you followed along with that video, we'll just follow it all the way around. We'll pivot at the corner. Let me show you how to do that right now with this foot. We're running the fold along the left side of the foot. I also forgot to mention that I bumped my stitch length up to a three. I like a little bit bigger stitch length. You can even go a little bit larger than that if you want, but anywhere in the 2.5 to 3.4 kind of range in there is all fine. And this is why that ironing is so important because we're using that fold. Okay, I'm gonna come up over the corner. And just like we've done before, keep your needle down, lift your presser foot up and pivot until we see that it's kind of close. That's pretty close to where it needs to be. Now you can see with this method, it's a little bit harder to get the stitch right up close to the edge. And so you can get a little bit closer with how you do your presser foot or kind of what lines you follow, but we want to keep our lines straight. So let's do this one more side and then I'll switch to the other foot. So if you just have the standard foot, go ahead and finish doing that all the way around and back stitch it, and then you're done. You can add an additional top stitch if you'd like, but that, then you're all set. But let me show you real quick how to use this foot. It doesn't make it any more complicated. It just simplifies it and allows you to use the tools that you've already got with your machine, which is pretty cool. So we can see down here at the bottom is where that edge guide is, and that is the edge guide we're gonna run along the fold. So with this foot, we're gonna need to put our fold up against that guide like this. So it's actually kind of going the opposite direction. And then that fold is gonna sit right there against that guide. And then we're just gonna make sure that our needle is going in the little cubby that is meant for the needle. There's different feet out there. You can kind of move this around, make larger, smaller hems and, and stitches. Um, just make sure you're being really careful to know that your needle isn't gonna hit anything on your foot. The only bummer is that it's a little bit harder to do the corners with this foot, but I think you guys will be fine. Let me get you a little closer. So we're gonna kinda have to help it come up over that fold. Okay, so I'm just on the other side of that seam. Lift the presser foot, rotate it, and see if we're about right. That looks pretty good. So the nice thing is all we have to do is worry about the fold being up against that guide and it makes for a really beautiful straight stitch. Back stitch when you get back to the beginning. Let's go back to the work table and take a look at the stitch differences. Okay, so let's take a look at this corner. Now this one that's real close to this edge right here, that was using that edge foot. Again, beautiful way of stitching it. It gets nice and close, it's super secure. Uh, you can go really fast that way, but if your machine did not come with one, that's okay because this way is all right too. 
This side also looks great. You can get a nice straight stitch. It's also secure. There's nothing underneath here that's coming through. Everything is tacked down and easy to wash. So either way is totally fine. From the front side, it doesn't matter. It just looks like a stitch going all the way around. So that's why you would wanna use a coordinating thread. I use the contrasting thread, which is totally cute too, but a coordinating thread will blend right in. If you wanna go back to the machine and add another little stitch, it's purely decorative. It's not necessary to make sure that it's washable or secured, but it just adds that little extra touch. So if you would like to, by all means, but it is not required.